Welcome back. In this chapter we will go into more detail about uh, possible central pawn structures and uh, we will use the uh, classification from the introduction, uh, the five or six uh, categories of pawn structures. Uh, but as I said, uh, we will go into more detail uh, by examining uh, several types uh, for, for each uh, category. Uh, these are the most common types of pawn, central pawn structures that can arise from many different openings. And the idea here is to uh, just uh, to get acquainted, uh, if you're not familiar with all of them, uh, with their names and uh, their features, so that uh, later uh, throughout the course, if I mention, let's say, uh, Boleslavsky pawn structure in the Sicilian, you uh, you're not asking yourself what is he talking about, but you actually have uh, a good idea about uh, that pawn structure. And uh, we will start uh, uh, with open uh, center uh, types of pawn structures, where basically we know that the central squares are uh, free uh, for pieces, there are no pawns there. And the most basic one is the one where they're, they're open D and E files. That's, that's a very simple... Sometimes you see this in games of beginners where they trade all the pieces uh, down, down uh, these two files. Um, but actually, you know, in games of stronger players, this, this is not really such a simple scenario. A lot of times there are uh, some really fierce uh, piece, clash, piece clashes uh, in the center. And... Uh, you know, you can see this may be in the Petrov defense uh, and uh, some other open games. Uh, so the side who has the initiative basically here has has a clear edge. But, you know, inherently these, these pawn structures are very solid and you really need to show something with your pieces. Otherwise, if your opponent has no weaknesses and you don't have any uh, sort of initiative on any side of the board, this just looks uh, equal. Uh, similar to that one is uh, the pawn structure where uh, C and D files are open. This is more common for uh, closed or semi-closed games, starting with D4. Um, and again, it's not as simple as it looks. Uh, the side uh, who has uh, some initiative uh, can uh, actually create a big advantage uh, because there, there are the, the plans here are quite direct. Right. And uh, it's difficult to obtain counterplay if your opponent uh, is attacking in the center. Uh, so these are the two basic types of central, uh, of open center. And then we have one more that's also very common, and it can arise from various openings. It is the one with queenside majority. Now all of these pawn structures are possible, that we will talk about, they are possible uh, for both sides. So there are also positions where we can uh, change the places of black e pawn and white c pawn. So white would have a pawn on e3, black would have a pawn on c6 instead, and then black would be the one with queenside majority. So uh, in all these cases, uh, keep in mind that uh, the same <coughs> sorry, the same rules apply uh, for white and for black if uh, the colors are reversed. And uh, in this type of pawn structure, clearly the queenside majority can uh, be an asset, especially in the endgame. And, uh, you know, maybe 100 or, or even more years ago, it was considered as an advantage. But the practice has proven that this is not really the case. And in this type of structure, both sides have their pros and cons. And then again, um, it really matters how well uh, your pieces are placed. Uh, here the d-file is very important, so the control over d-file can be essential. Uh, and it's important to keep in mind that really using this queenside majority is difficult uh, in the middle game, but in the end game it can be uh, quite, quite a strong idea. But it's same for black, so black can also use his pawns, push them to e5, f5, e4, and so on. Now, let's move on to different types of pawn structures which are uh, closed center pawn structures. Uh, and the basic one that we already seen in the introduction is the one with the e4, d5 pawn wedge. Um, 
Now the pawn can be on c4, black pawn can be on c5, maybe there could be an exchange with c6, c takes d5, c takes d5, uh, whatever it is we are focusing on these central pawns. And here clearly white has a spatial advantage and his plan is uh, usually to advance on the queen side, black's plan is to either stop this expansion or uh, even simultaneously try to attack on the other side of the board with g6 f5 uh, and we will see uh, several examples here how to how to play these types of positions um, similar to that one although uh, coming usually from uh, open or semi open games it's uh, the one where there is this pawn wedge with d4 e5 uh, and let's say Immediate, what immediately comes to mind is uh, the French defense or the advanced variation of the Karo Cup. So white grabs space in the center and actually this one is closer to black king. Uh, it limits uh, black's uh, uh, options on the king side definitely. And if we have let's say bishop on d3 it also gives us some attacking ideas. Clearly there will be no knight on f6 to protect the king. So very often in these structures, white is trying to create some sort of an attack, king side attack, or let's say the king is not on the king side, then uh, his plan is uh, similar to that one that we've seen uh, just uh, with the other pawn structure, e4 and d5. He wants to push uh, the f pawn this time to create the weakness on e6 or push it to f6. Uh, black on his part has two breaks, c5 and f6. Uh, with which he wants to undermine uh, white's pawn center. Now, another type of uh, central pawn structure that we talked about in the introduction is the fixed center. And here, the basic one that we've already seen is with pawns on d4 and d5, complete symmetry here. Uh, what is important here are these two open files and the squares on these files, so e5, c5, and e4 and c4 and um, this is a little bit more open so uh, it's not it's something in between open and closed center right uh, so to some degree the it's, it's quite open for pieces you know there are some open diagonals open files uh, but on the other hand since there are no um, pawn breaks available in the center sometimes it's possible for one of the sides to start the uh, pawn storm, on, especially on the king side, uh, because as you can see uh, the center is pretty fixed. Um, so since there is there is symmetry, again the side with the initiative can can hold a significant advantage. Let's see another type of fixed pawn structure. This one is quite common for many openings. Uh, for example, you know, these symmetrical reti or types of openings or uh, fillet doors and things like that. Uh, if there is an exchange uh, on e5, uh, then we get this type of position. And again, d file is open, but I don't think it's that significant uh, here. What's more important here is maneuvering that happens on uh, both flanks. Uh, so uh, for example, if white has the initiative on the king side, he will try to maybe bring his knight to f5, uh, bring some other pieces uh, closer to the king. Uh, the other type of plan is to maybe bring the knight to c4 and attack the d6 square, maybe push the pawn uh, to a4, a5, b4, and so on. And black can do the same, of course. If black is the one who has uh, Piece, the better placed pieces, he can, he can try the same types of plans. Okay, let's see another type of fixed center. It's the one where white has a, a space advantage. So this we often see in Karo Khan, for example. When white has pushed his pawn to e5, usually it happens after the exchange on e5, maybe when he's pushing his pawn to h4 and h5 and black puts his one on h6. Uh, but this is also a very solid uh, the central pawn structure for black and uh, despite the spatial advantage sometimes black can comfortably hold this position um, so white really needs to show something uh, maybe some sort of an attack uh, 
uh, or you know push until the npm until he creates some some more serious uh, weakness. Uh, Black's chance is in such structure is actually the e5 pawn exactly because uh, especially in the end games this pawn can be can prove to be uh, you know overly advanced and maybe Black can uh, engulf it with a move like g5 and then bring his king to f5 and things like that. Let us see now a similar pawn structure only with the e file open. Uh, this usually happens from uh, open games when there there is pawn on e4, pawn on d6, and there is an exchange on d5. E takes d5. White has uh, more space on the queen side this time. So some plans again like a4, a5 to gain more more space are uh, usually good for white, or to push c4, b4, and c5. Uh, Control over e-file, of course, is important, but usually a lot of pieces get exchanged there. Um, so, again, very similar to, to the previous one, d5 pawn could be uh, weak in the endgame if white is not careful. Um, so, you know, this spatial advantage, uh, but just by itself, it's, it doesn't guarantee that white is better. Now, uh, the last type of fixed center that I wanted to single out is this one. French center without the d4 pawn. This is a very common type of pawn structure. Uh, so the only e5 pawn is in the center and uh, it still limits uh, black's options to some degree. It's not supported by the uh, d4 pawn, but this d4 square is actually um, freed for, for pieces, especially uh, for the knight. So the knight would be the best on this outpost. Um, and white usually supports with the f4 pawn. Uh, black, on the other hand, can try to uh, undermine it with the move f6. Uh, so this is sort of an attacking uh, setup for white, because not only does he uh, get, let's say, bishop on d3, he also likes to put, as I said, the knight on d4, uh, and this opens up uh, some possibilities like queen, queen g4, queen h5, and so on. In the end games, this is a very solid structure for black, uh, he gets the uh, c file for counterplay, the semi open c file, uh, and uh, he can sometimes do the minority attack with the move b5, b4, and so on. Now let us move to these pawn structures that I mentioned uh, as the sixth type or sixth category, uh, the semi fixed center. So, as you can see here in this example of isolated queen spawn, um, it is basically possible to push the pawns in the center, they're not completely fixed, but as it often happens, these pawns, let's say if black puts a piece on d5, these pawns will stay there for a long time, and, and uh, for all intents and purposes, this center is fixed. So a lot of piece play uh, uh, is uh, happening around these pawns. Uh, of course, this is not the only type of isolated queen spawn position. There could be the one where there is black pawn on c7 or the pawn on c6. Uh, and also we can reverse it, uh, reverse the colors so that black has a pawn on d5 and white has a pawn on c3 instead. Uh, so many, there are many variations uh, in the opening that could lead to this type of pawn structure. Uh, we could argue that this is probably the, the most important uh, central pawn structure in chess. And you really need to know uh, the important uh, guidelines how to play it. Uh, but we will talk about them uh, when we reach the chapter on this. Uh, for now, it's just important to know that uh, this could also lead to an open center if uh, white pushes the pawn to d5. And then you have to rearrange your strategies. Uh, so you have to remember what we talked about the open center and uh, you use rules that uh, apply to that kind of position. Uh, somehow similar to, to that is only we, we put the pawns on d5 and e3 is the Carlo pawn structure but it's much more closed. So here we have a heavy heavy duty maneuvering a lot of times. Um, white often has this minority attack uh, the famous method with b4, a4 and b5, where he's trying to weaken black's pawn structure, because you can see that black's uh, structure on the queen side, while solid, is quite immobile. That's why I'm saying semi-fixed. It can stay there for, for the remainder of the game. But if something uh, you know, good happens for black and 
uh, white doesn't push b4 and so on, he can maybe also uh, start his uh, uh, pawns moving with b6 and c5. Um, also, black uh, has a minority attack of his own available on the uh, king side with the move f5 and f4, which could be quite a strong idea. And white, uh, white's remaining pawn break is e4, which he usually supports with the f3 move. So f3, e4, like that, he would create uh, one structure that we will see a little bit later, uh, the classical center, with two pawns uh, in the center. Um, and other plans involve just uh, peace maneuvering where you're trying to create weaknesses for your opponent, maybe there are some kingside attacks for both sides, and so on. Another very important <coughs> pawn structure uh, for, for everyone to know. Now, here we have what everyone should recognize as a stone wall pawn structure, and uh, clearly uh, the idea here is to create uh, a wall for white so that he cannot uh, open up the center. Uh, so we have a lot of maneuvering going on here. Uh, it's a very dynamic pawn structure, structure, I like it uh, for both colors. Uh, it doesn't seem that way, but actually a lot of pawn breaks are possible. For example, black can break with both e5 and c5 at the right moment. f4 can be a dangerous attacking idea for him. And white also, he, he has several um, other uh, several ideas to get into other pawn structures. For example, he can take on d5, and then if black takes with e pawn, we transpose directly into the Carlsbad pawn structure. Uh, if black takes with the c pawn, then the c file opens up, um, and then white can also prepare this break f3, e4, which leads to uh, complications usually. Uh, another plan that White has at his disposal is just to block everything with c5, sometimes even with f4, and then he just focuses on uh, the attack on flanks. So in that case, we would get the closed center. So if White pushes uh, both c5 and f4, uh, now the rules for closed center apply, and uh, play on the flanks uh, becomes very important. Who is faster? So another very important uh, uh, pawn structure that can arise not only from the Stonewall Dutch, but also uh, from uh, the Queen's Indian defense and, and several other openings. Uh, another type of semi-fixed center that's very common for uh, for the Sicilian defense, it's the Boleslavsky backward pawn on d6. Um, so there is one variation in the Nydorf, uh, where which was played by a player named Isak Boleslavsky, who was a strong grandmaster uh, some 60-70 years ago, and uh, here he's leaving his d6 pawn uh, as a backward pawn, and this would seem like a huge weakness, but this is what he did also <clears throat> in the King's Indian defense, and we will see the structure uh, shortly. Basically the idea here is to compensate this weakness by better control of the center. You see that e5 pawn controls uh, center square d4 and also f4 square, and it doesn't allow white to push his pawn forward. Uh, and uh, basically active peace play. And this is uh, perfect for the Sicilian, because in Sicilian you're trying to play actively, look for counterplay. Uh, White usually tries to control d5 square as, as firmly as possible. Uh, you know that uh, he has the knight usually on c3. Now if White would get to put his pawn on c4, this could lead in, in a lot of positions to a serious positional advantage for white, because uh, this pawn on d6 would be fixed uh, uh, quite uh, strongly. But even that is not a terrible pawn structure. Uh, but actually a more important idea for white is just to stop black from pushing d5. Because if black pushes d5, we transpose into uh, this open center pawn structure with a pawn majority. But where black already has the pawn on e5, and he might have some other pluses, like a piece on d5, and it usually gives him a good game. Uh, so that's what uh, how, how the uh, what the play revolves around here. D5 square is, is the key, but also black a lot of times has this plan with a6 and b5. Um, so it's it's a very dynamic and interesting uh, structure as well. Uh, the next one, so we just put the pawn from e5 to to c7. Uh, it's the Philidor pawn structure arises from the Philidor. Uh, opening a lot, build their defense. Uh, there is an e4, e5, and then exchange on uh, on d4. It can arise from the scotch uh, game as well. 
Uh, white has definitely spatial advantage here, but uh, black is quite uh, um, flexible because he has, again, this d5 break, but he can also attack the center from the side with, with the move f5, in which case he would have a majority on the queen side. Um, white uh, ca can also open up the position with the move e5, if, if the moment is right for that. Um, so definitely a pawn structure that's quite uh, uh, dynamic for both sides. Uh, but usually it gives a slight edge to white. Because if white puts his pieces right, it's not that easy for, for black to, to make any of these pawn breaks in the center. And then white's spatial advantage should give him uh, some, some edge. Um, now, similar to Boleslavsky's uh, Sicilian pawn structure, here we have a French backward pawn on e6. This could ca happen, for example, if there was uh, a closed center with the pawn on e5, pawn on e5 and f7, and black plays f6 to undermine the center, they exchange the pawns, and then we, uh, we get this backward pawn on e6. Now, this is a little bit more um, problematic for black, uh, because uh, this pawn, as you can see from f file, has uh, disappeared and then it's, it's quite close to his king. So his king, his king is more exposed. Uh, and pushing the pawn to e5 uh, allows uh, or leaves the pawn on d5 isolated. So in general these pawn structures are better for white, especially if he has full control over the e5 square. Now we have the Benoni pawn structure, another semi-fixed uh, pawn structure, because it stays like this for a long time. Uh, clearly maneuvering uh, for black will happen mostly on the queen side, he's going to try to uh, get an edge there. Uh, but you know, and this is not only a, a structure that happens in the Benoni opening, that's why I left the pawn on g7. It can happen from, let's say, Rui Lopez, uh, or Italian game sometimes. Um, so, so here, if black has the bishop on g7, like in the Benoni, he can combine uh, queenside play uh, with also uh, you know, pressure along this diagonal. Also, g6 pawn supports f5 break, uh, so, so that's a complex uh, position. White, on the other hand, he's trying to uh, make sure that black doesn't do anything uh, dangerous on the queenside. And his main idea is actually to push f4 and e5. Now, if he can do that and get the uh, pass pawn in the center, this would be this gets quite dangerous sometimes for black. So this is a risky pawn structure for black. Uh, it gives him a lot of counterplay, but he has to be careful because uh, strategically speaking, this d6 pawn is uh, you know, left on its own, and if, if it is gone, then white has a dangerous pass pawn on d5. Um, here is a semi-fixed uh, pawn center with pawns on d4 and e5 against the d5 pawn. Now the pawn for black can be on c7 or c6. Maybe he can even push c5 to create, to make an exchange in the center. Anyway, white has the pawn on e5 and black does not have pawn on e6. And this gives white a lot of times these options to push the f4 pawn with some dangerous uh, kingside attack. So. In general, this structure, if black doesn't get uh, counterplay in time, can be quite dangerous for black. Here we have the Panov pawn structure, which I think we saw in the introduction as well. Uh, oftentimes it happens from the Panov Karokan, Panov variation, uh, where uh, black is not taking on c4, and then at some point white pushes the, his pawn to c5. Now, at the first glance, it looks uh, great for white because e5 break is uh, uh, stopped. Uh, it's not easy for black to prepare it with f6 because uh, it weakens his king. And on the other hand, white has a clear pawn, ma <coughs> sorry, pawn majority uh, on the uh, queen side. So if he could get uh, his pawns to b4 and b5, uh, it looks really great for him. But things are not so simple. Usually black has the knight on c6 to block it and he can undermine with b6. And uh, again, this knight on c6 puts the pressure on the d4 pawn, supports the e5 break uh, to take back with a piece. Uh, so it's, it's a really uh, double-edged pawn structure. 
and if white gets into it, he has to make sure that black's breaks with b6 and e5 are, are not dangerous. Uh, one semi-fix uh, type of pawn, uh, pawn center that doesn't happen that often, but if you're a d4 player, then you will see it a lot from the Greenfield defense, sometimes from um, the King's Indian defense, let's say the pawn is on c7, um, and some other uh, openings where white had pawns on d4 and e4 and black pushed e5, uh, is this one where uh, clearly there is a pass pawn and uh, black needs to block it. If he gets a knight on d6, black can even be better because uh, he has a, a majority on the queen side. So if he pushes these pawns, he's basically he's virtually up a pawn. On the other hand, it's quite annoying because uh, it, this is a protected pass pawn on, on d5. So even if white doesn't push it, he always has this advantage, especially in the endgame, that it is a protected pawn. Uh, so black has to know what he's doing if he's getting into this pawn structure. Uh, again, the key here is to block it and to block any, any ways for white to uh, push this pawn forward. Here we will take a look at a different type of uh, pawn center. This is our fourth category, the mobile pawn center. And we start with the hanging pawns. Uh, I already mentioned them in the introduction. Uh, so I will not uh, spend too much time on them. Uh, this type of structure happens from many openings, especially those where there is a, a flexible center uh, at the start, so there are some exchanges afterwards. And it's a dynamic structure. Uh, of course, hanging pawns can be a weakness as much as, as a strength, because uh, they need to be supported by pieces. The more pieces get traded, uh, it might get more difficult to support them. And then if you have to push them forward, uh, they are just weak. They have no support. But the flip side is that if black has everything in order, his pieces are placed well, uh, this can be a dangerous structure for white as well. Because if black pushes the pawns forward with uh, you know, some, some initiative, uh, then, then white could really be in trouble. Uh, so we will also take a look at several uh, instructive games in this pawn structure. Now, uh, pawn structure is a little bit uh, more kind of peaceful. It's the Karo Khan pawn structure, uh, where white controls the center with his d4 pawn, but black is extremely solid here. And even if white pushes c4, uh, it's still not easy for him to get any sort of pawn advantage in the center. So he usually tries to put uh, his pieces on squares like e5 or e4 and try to exert the pressure on, on black's position on, on one of the flanks. Uh, and black, uh, he's just uh, banking on solidity and also he, can, uh, he has these two breaks with c5 or e5. With e5 we transpose into the open center type of position. With c5 uh, it's, it's a less balanced uh, but also open type. Uh, with the uh, white's queenside majority. Uh, similar to it is the Slav pawn structure. Uh, so instead of uh, the pawn on the C file, there is one on E file. And again, even if white pushes E4, yes, he has the, the advantage in the center, but it's not that easy to do anything with it. So it's very important for him to uh, organize play on one of the flanks. Here, for example, the semi-open C file gives us opportunities to play more on the queen side. Uh, but also some attacks like e4, e5, and then putting your pieces uh, closer to, to black king are possible for white. Another type of mobile center is the Marozzi bind. And here uh, there are very few openings from which it happens. So there is a Marozzi, and also there are some king's Indian positions uh, where basically uh, white has a uh, big spatial advantage, but uh, black is uh, extremely solid. So this, this pawn structure, if you look at the pawn chain, only e7 pawn <coughs> could be weak. And uh, black also has uh, this break with a6 and b5 to gain more space. Um, so while this is uh, considered to be better uh, for white, uh, in practical play, uh, it's never that easy. 
White has to be very patient in order to uh, break uh, Black's defenses. Sometimes he also has these breaks like c5 uh, or f4, e5. Uh, but again, this, this requires a lot of patience. Um, similar to this is the hedgehog pawn structure. So uh, instead of having the bishop on g, g7, it's usually on e7. d6 is a potential weakness for sure, but with the bishop on e7, it's well protected. Uh, rook comes to d8, and it's almost impossible for white to, to crack this. Um, and this uh, involves a lot of maneuvering. Very often, white's plan is to attack on the king side, actually, with moves like f4, f5, or uh, g4, g5, and so on. Um, and black, on the other hand, especially if white uh, does this plan with the king side uh, expansion too early, has uh, these pawn breaks available, sometimes even at the cost of a pawn. Uh, he'll push b5 or d5, open up the center, and you can imagine what happens if white's king is wide open. Uh, so, uh, again, it's not to everyone's taste, this type of position, but if black is patient enough, and he likes to maneuver waiting for his moment, then this is a very good type of position to play. Uh, and white, white uh, does not need to be careful, so uh, while he holds this structure, there, there is no risk for him, but uh, as things you know, happen in the game, uh, he, he really needs to maneuver uh, carefully. And uh, similar sort of to this, but only with the pawn on the C file, is this King's Indian bind. Um, so, as I mentioned, this, is, this was Boleslavsky's favorite type of uh, structure in the King's Indian. The pawn on d6 is indeed a potential weakness on the semi-open file. Uh, but, you know, similar to Hedgehog uh, structure, there are these d5, f5, and b5 breaks. Um, so, black needs to show some dynamic play with his pieces to compensate for, for this weakness. A lot of times the counterplay uh, along the e file is quite important too. And here we have uh, probably uh, one of the most classical uh, pawn structures, the full center. Uh, you could call it also the hanging center, now that I look at it, because there are no pawns supporting them. Uh, so white has uh, extremely nice uh, formation here. He can push the pawn to d5 or to e5. Uh, so in that sense, it is mobile, and it also limits uh, black's options in the center significantly. Uh, but it's not automatic advantage. Black can put serious uh, counterplay against the center, and especially with some break like c5, and if white is forced to push d5, then if he uh, creates uh, a blockade on squares uh, e5 and d6, uh, black can even get some serious counter chances. So uh, a double-edged uh, structure, and not, not an automatic uh, advantage for white. Um, here we have the semi tarash pawn structure. So in the opening, like semi tarash sometimes uh, Grunfeld defense, uh, we get the structure where, white, where there was an exchange on c3, uh, exchange of pieces on c3, and then there was an exchange of pawns on d4, and this is how we get this imbalance in the center. Black has the queen side majority, um, but a lot of times this, this is quite dangerous if uh, white pushes the pawn to d5, uh, and it's supported by heavy pieces. So uh, black really needs to keep this, uh, this pawn break in the center in check in these positions. And there is one very uh, uh, popular position these days in the semi tarash where black puts his bishop on b7, knight on d7, and He's extremely solid. It's, it's hard for white to, to create any pawn breaks. Uh, another type of pawn, mobile pawn structure is uh, Scheveningen pawn structure from the Scheveningen Sicilian. And uh, here, th so this is quite similar to Boleslavsky King's Indian, uh, sorry, Boleslavsky Sicilian, uh, where the pawn is on e5. Uh, so there is a semi open c file for black, semi open d file for white. But with the pawn on e6, uh, somehow it's, it's a little bit uh, more flexible for black. He can, of course, put this pawn on e5 later if he wants to. But also, uh, this pawn supports the 
d5 break, doesn't allow any white pieces to get on d5. Um, and it's, it's very common for many variations in the Sicilian. And I think finally we have the Grunfeld pawn structure. Um, this is the pawn structure that I think is characteristic only of this opening. It could happen with colors reversed if black plays the red opening. Um, so here white has full, basically, uh, freedom in the center to do whatever he wants with his pawns. Even if this pawn is on d4, he still has a really nice pawn center. And black is doing this on purpose, he's letting him push the pawns, we've seen one example earlier. And then later he wants to undermine it with a move like c6 or e6. And then uh, this, this pawn might even become weak. On the other hand, if white has everything under control, and let's say after c6, c takes d5, e takes d5, there could be a weak pawn on e7 for black. And white has the more space, so he can uh, create some sort of a kingside attack. Uh, so, uh, double-edged pawn structure, but Grunfeld has proven to be a very, very good opening for black over the years. So, uh, it's, it's important to remember that this is also not, it doesn't give white an automatic advantage. So, I think, yeah, we talked about all 30 uh, important pawn structures, at least what I came up with. Um, now I think uh, if even if uh, you in, in the upcoming chapter if if you uh, are not sure about certain pawn structure about its name or about certain features you can always come back to to this uh, video and uh, just uh, quickly take a look at what we talked about. Um, so in the next video we will already start to, uh, talking about uh, pawn structures in the open center. And uh, we will look at some uh, basic plans for both sides, uh, some evaluation criteria, how to know when the structure is good and when it's bad. And we will see, of course, uh, nice games by strong players, how they uh, used uh, important plans, uh, both for black and for white, in these positions.